One of Assassin's Creed Mirage's biggest selling points is that it's a much smaller and more focused experience than some of its immediate predecessors. But though it doesn't have the endless real estate expanse and complex RPG systems of recent series installments, it's still a fairly sizable dense experience. Across its stealth, parkour, and open world structure, there's plenty going on here for you to get to grips with in the early hours with the game. And to help make that process a little bit smoother for you, here we've compiled a few handy pointers that you should keep in mind. Avoid Combat Mirage goes back to the stealth-driven approach of older Assassin's Creed titles, which means combat is heavily discouraged. Basim doesn't take too many hits to go down, while enemies are much more resilient and your moveset when in and out of combat is also quite limited. As a rule of thumb, then, you should avoid combat whenever possible. Rely on stealth first and foremost, and if you ever are in combat, make sure to nail the timing of your dodges and parries. Above all else, though, if you find yourself facing more than two or three enemies at a time, tucking tail and running to re-enter stealth is usually the best option. Cheesing Stealth As is the case with any stealth game, there are ways to cheese Assassin's Creed Mirage's mechanics and game the AI, and in particularly the hairy situations. Remember that there always is a viable strategy. For instance, if you're ever in an area that's being patrolled by a number of enemies, you'll find that hiding in tall grass and whistling to lure guards to your position one after the other is a great way of whittling down their numbers. Similarly, if you're caught, it's often a good idea to run as far away as you can, hide, and come back a couple of minutes after things have cooled down again. Social Blending Social stealth mechanics were once a staple in Assassin's Creed games, and though that hasn't been the case for a few years now, they've made their triumphant return in Mirage, and given how useful they can be, it's smart to always keep an eye out for them. From bench assassinations to hiding in large crowds, from hiring mercenaries to fight guards to hiring musicians to distract them, there's usually several social stealth opportunities at your disposal, and they're often the most efficient way to sneak past enemies. Stealth Tools Progression and upgrade mechanics have been heavily parred back in Assassin's Creed Mirage, but you do still need to put a little bit of thought in when, say, you're deciding which upgrade to equip for your stealth tools. Each upgrade for a tool opens up three possible buffs, out of which only one can be equipped. When making that choice, think carefully about your preferred playstyle and which upgrade would suit you best. Throwing Knives Speaking of upgrades, for your tools, given how the game is structured, the first tool that you'll be upgrading will be your throwing knives. Out of the three options available here, the most useful one is probably the one that gives you longer range. While having additional max ammo for your throwing knives certainly helps, having the ability to take out an enemy from a greater distance will prove to be much handier in some of Baghdad's more heavily defended locations. Destroy Bells Picking off enemies and guards one by one is obviously going to be your go-to way of dealing with the threat that the enemies will pose to you in hostile areas, though there are other methods that are worth keeping in mind as well. For instance, something that you should immediately scout out using your eagle in enemy camps and forts is the bell that they ring to call for backup. And if they do have one, it's usually a smart idea to make it a priority to destroy that bell as soon as you can. Alerting enemies is always a possibility, and in those instances, it's good to have the assurance that at least they won't be able to call for backup. Healing Items and Ammo Assassin's Creed Mirage places pretty heavy restrictions on you in terms of the quantity of each tool you carry, and how much heals you have at your disposal. Every now and again, then, it's a good idea to stock up. Whether that's by returning to a Hidden One's Bureau, more on that in a bit, or looting a chest or finding a traitor to trade with, make sure that you're never running low on the essentials, especially when you're about to head into a dangerous area. Pickpocketing Pickpocketing is one of several classic Assassin's Creed mechanics that have made a return in Mirage, and though it's quite simple and straightforward, it's definitely not something you should be ignoring. Though each lift individually won't be the most lucrative, collectively they do add up, especially thanks to how easy the mechanic is. As such, anytime you find yourself in a crowded area, make sure to pickpocket as many people as possible. Eagle Vision Here's another returning mechanic, and a fan favorite at that. 
Mirage still lets you manually fly an eagle and use it as a drone to scout out enemy camps, but the old school eagle vision mechanic has returned as well. It's an incredibly useful tool, so make liberal use of it. Obviously, in hostile areas, it's a great way of remaining aware of enemies that may or may not be around you. But even when you're out in the open world, Eagle Vision can be used to great effect to find and track down valuable loot chests and collectibles. Hidden Ones Bureaus there are several Hidden Ones bureaus hidden throughout the city of Baghdad, where the Brotherhood carries out its activities in secret, something that longtime series fans will find familiar, and it's worth it to keep returning to them from time to time. Not only are you able to refill your ammo at bureaus, you can also upgrade your tools or pick up new contracts from the Contracts board. Speaking of which... Contracts Given their nature as smaller, one-off side quests, you might be tempted to not pay too much attention to contracts, though our advice would be to not do that. The rewards you receive can come in handy for crafting, but more importantly, each contract also gives you a favor token, which can be used to lower your notoriety, reduce prices at merchants, hire groups to fight against or distract guards, and more, all of which is stuff that you're going to be doing a lot of. Given how rare tokens are, contracts will be your best bet of earning them. Viewpoints This is something that Assassin's Creed fans won't need telling about, but let's cover the basics anyway, shall we? Though there are much fewer viewpoints in Mirage's open world map, simply by virtue of its smaller size, it's still important to keep an eye out for them and synchronize with them as soon as you find them. Synchronized viewpoints are key to fast traveling, and you're going to be fast traveling quite a bit in this game. Vision Boost Mirage features a very simple and sweet skill tree. Vision Boost is one such skill that you will want to unlock once you reach the second half of the game. As noted previously, stealth is a huge focus in Mirage with the integration of Eagle Vision and various other social elements. Once you unlock Vision Boost, the radius of Eagle Vision will increase drastically. Stealth Recon Another skill you would want to unlock is the Stealth Recon. This skill will automatically highlight everything when the player is crouched and undetected. So, it's like the next level of Eagle Vision where it's enabled by default as long as you're in the shadows. Tales of Baghdad Tales of Baghdad are essentially Mirage's take on the world events in Valhalla, and they're some of the game's brightest highlights. Though they're smaller quests, they contribute significantly to building the city's incredible atmosphere and further enriching the setting with its insight into its culture. The setting is often the best part of an Assassin's Creed game, and if that's one of your main reasons for playing this game, <laughs> you're not going to want to skip the Tales of Baghdad quests. Historical Sites Scattered throughout Baghdad and its surroundings, you'll also find historical sites. Not only do they give you more of an insight into the city's culture and history, once you find all of them, you also unlock a special outfit. Obviously, this isn't something that you're going to be done with in the early hours of the game, but it's worth working towards as a long-term goal. Mysterious Shards Similar to historical sites, several mysterious shards are also scattered throughout the Assassin's Creed Mirage's open world. And again, these are collectibles well worth tracking down, because the gear that you're awarded with at the end is quite useful, and something that dedicated series fans will probably like. Hey, did you know that we at Gaming Vault upload new videos every day? Stick around, drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and let us know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future with a comment below.